It's time for our interesting stories of the day chat with Richard Southern. And Richard, another glass ceiling has been broken quite literally in this case. <laughs> Hard to believe this one, Erica. It really is. Good to see you, by the way. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. But the world's first female crash test dummy has arrived. Uh, and there she is. Uh, look, compared to men, women are 17 percent more likely to die in a car crash. Yet despite that horrible disparity, car companies have only been required to test vehicles using crash test dummies modeled after the average man. Thankfully, that's about to change. Swedish researchers have created now a crash test dummy that better represents the female body. And experts say this is going to lead to safer cars for women going forward. I think we know who the real dummies are here, Erica. It is the the male car company executives. Right. Uh, what a horrible oversight by it's them. Am I right? It's a long time coming. I mean, I'm glad it's here now, but it took a while, didn't it? Hmm. Uh, it took like, yeah, like a, like 100 years. Right. I'm going to apologize on behalf of all men for this one. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, scientists have made a remarkable discovery, but real life sharks did most of the work on this one, Richard. Yeah, they're pretty good, as it turns out, at uh, videography. Um, this is some pretty cool video here. What they did, researchers strapped a, a camera to tiger sharks' backs, and they sent them off looking for what they call seagrass forests, big underground um, forests of this important seagrass where a lot of um, you know important ecosystem activity happens. There's the video right there. Uh, the data these sharks collected uh, showed uh, or uncovered the world's largest known seagrass ecosystem in the Caribbean, stretching 92,000 square kilometers. You know, investigating that growth had been hard before, but it turns out tiger sharks are the perfect creatures to do it. They're highly mobile and they can dive to significant depths and they like the seagrass. So how about that, Erica? Wow. We're employing now the uh, tiger sharks. Which scientist uh, volunteered to be the one to strap that camera on the shark? I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Who drew the short straw on that one? <laughs> okay, uh, finally, remember that famous movie line, E.T. Phone Home? Well, it begs the question, what would humans do if aliens actually tried to make contact with us? It's a good question, right? What if we get a message or who knows? Maybe yeah. they land they land in young Dundas Square, Erica? Who knows? But it turns out now scientists are actually getting together and they're thinking about how they would uh, deal with that particular scenario. And uh, the group says, you know, they're, they're putting together a protocol that would focus on how to inform the public on that and how scientists would perhaps seek instruction from, you know, the United Nations or another governing, governing body. Uh, currently, the only alien contact protocol uh, was established back in 1989 by SETI, the uh, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute. You know, if they do land uh, or contact us, I'm going to direct them to you, Erica. You're pretty, uh, <laughs> you're a nice person. I think you could uh, direct them very to diplomatic. wherever they want to go. Yeah, I'm very diplomatic. I don't know. I think yeah, you're, you're good you'd, at that stuff. No, I would say you're probably the better one to talk. Some people think that they've already made they, contact, right? <laughs> they might come looking for me. All the UFO talk we right. do here at 640 every day, they might come looking for it's me. It's been transmitted out into space, and they know about you already, Richard. <laughs> <Okay>. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow.